Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you're well. We're back in Planet Zoo again, and this is Tiny Zoo. This is our zoo with small sort of compact enclosures, lots of nice foliage, lots of nice buildings, um, lots of fake pathways and walkways and stuff like that. And in our last episode, we built this little enclosure here for our Arctic foxes. And uh, you can see they're all in here and having fun. And uh, yeah, it wasn't my finest work, I'll be honest, but I did have a lot of fun with this one, uh, particularly making this nice fake viewing platform at the back here. Um, but yeah, I quite like it. I mean, it's 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 a realistic enclosure. Uh, this is the sort of habitat that they might actually have in a zoo, whereas obviously in the wild, I think they'd probably be found in a more snowy location. Um, but for the sake of a little bit of realism uh, this is pretty cool I, I think uh, so that was our last episode so what are we going to be doing today well I can take you over to this area here so this is between our lemurs on the right here and the ibex over on the left um, look at these lovely little things trotting around on their on their hills I love these little things they're so cute Anyway, this is the gap that we're going to be working in today. It's a bit of an odd shaped area, this one. Um, and it gave me a bit of an idea of what to put in here. And let me show you. That is what we are going to be putting in there today. The American alligator. Look at that terrifying looking beast, isn't it? And uh, yeah, I thought I could have a bit of fun. I had a bit of an idea of roughly what I wanted. Um, I wanted an underwater sunken viewing area for these because they do spend most of the time in the water so I thought it made sense to make that the main feature so my thinking was to have a sort of a land area in in roughly in this space here with some kind of a, a sunken viewing area on the side here with some steps leading to this pathway here so that's my basic plan uh, so obviously I had to start off first just mapping out a rough shape and size uh, so let me load up my first save point, shall we? And we'll see what I got started with. Okay, here we go. This is our rough shape. Uh, so I wanted the enclosure to go right up into this point here. Um, my thinking was that I was I would have some windows around this end for, so people could stand around this area here and look in at them and, and then some kind of a, a sleeping area for the alligators in this end piece here. Um, I wanted to leave a gap here because I wanted to put a pathway down. Um, I wanted this path to loop around and lead out this way into more of the zoo over that direction. Um, obviously, this is the glass area here. Always have a lot of fun with this. It took me a little while of sort of manipulating all the uh, the pieces in the ground and whatever to actually get it to work, but uh, I got there in the end. Uh, and so the idea was that they would have a large area of water here that you could come right down and uh, and look into. I wanted a bit of a shallower area here for them to sort of come in and out. And obviously there was going to be a whole load of landscaping to be done here. So the idea was that there'd be a pathway just coming down here, uh, right down to the level of the uh, the bottom of the glass here. And then some kind of seating area maybe down here for them. Um, not a huge amount of land space but then they, they really don't need a lot and uh, uh, yeah they spend most of their time just floating in the water and, and that's quite realistic they do that in real life and they do it in the game so um, so you don't really need to give them vast amounts of walking space as anyone knows crocodiles and alligators don't do a lot of moving about they'll only move when they have to and usually that's when they're hunting for food uh, other than that, they are, are very silent, deadly creatures. They, you know, they they can just lurk for hours on end, just sitting still, apparently not um, not breathing or moving or anything. Uh, when actually they're just sitting there and watching and waiting for something to do. So that's uh, that's our habitat. So here we go. So you can see there exactly sort of shape and size that it's going to be. Uh, I believe I probably crack on with the uh, getting this landscaping done next uh, but let me load up our next point and um, yeah well, let's see what I did next 
Right, so this is uh, a little bit more advanced here. We um, we have our alligators in. Let's have a look at our alligators first. Look at them. Magnificent creatures, aren't they? So here we have Tyson. What a great name for our big male alligator, Tyson. That's a brilliant name. Uh, and he's got four girlfriends. He has, let's have a look, Tyrion, Verly, uh, we have Wan, and we have our oh, Arizona. That's a nice name, isn't it? So they're all in and very happy. And as you can see, they are just doing what they do, floating around, not doing a lot. Um, right, let's look. I've obviously put the entrance way in over here, and raised up this bit of wall just a little bit so that the um, the door was was covered by the uh, the concrete. I just had to manipulate this edge a little bit so I could get this path in exactly how I wanted it. So that path nicely comes around the corner, and then it means I can uh, I can obviously lead off into a, another enclosure, or whatever over here. And this is the start of our sunken area. Now, what I decided to do here, as I said uh, before, and if you follow this series, you'll know. Uh, what I'm doing in, in Tiny Zoo is not making everything actually usable by in-game characters. Um, I'm never going to actually open this up to uh, you know people to come in. As you can see, I'm not even connected. The zoo isn't actually connected to the um, to the outside world. I mean, all my zookeepers keep getting stuck over here. I have brought them all back into the zoo now, and I have actually linked this up with a pathway so that they don't keep getting stuck here because for some reason they just keep on appearing over here and then they can't do anything which is not a lot good but because of that um it means as long as my my habitats are connected up so that the um the main habitat gates are accessible it means that bits like this like viewing areas i can create things that are unusable but still look good and so that's what i've decided to do with this i've used this lovely rustic stone floor uh, what's it actually called? Oh, it is exactly that a rustic stone floor because um, I love the look of it. I think it's fantastic. I keep using the uh, the wall pieces with this as well. Um, and I decided to make quite a grand stairway. So this is again, it's one of the new European pieces here, uh, and then uh, the uh, the extension there. So obviously not not usable in game, but it looks fantastic. And I just thought, why not? Let's just use that as the stairway uh, leading in from the path here. Uh, so that's it. It, it. it changes a little bit as I go along. You can see the bottom step here is too deep. Um, so I do raise up the floor a bit. Obviously, I've got work to do around the edge to fill that in. Um, but you can see that's that's my basic idea for this. And I don't even have to put any pathway in down here because of the new seats that they put in for restaurants which you can place anywhere and so that's what I use down here in the end because usually if you wanted to put benches down you have to put pathway down for the benches to go on uh, which is quite a silly system to be honest so it's, uh, it's kind of annoying it'd be nice if you could just put bins and benches down anywhere but uh, that's just not how the game works unfortunately um, I also raised the glass wall here right up to the top uh, it looks a bit silly because you've actually got more empty glass than you have glass with water and um, yeah that's just yeah it's, it's, it's what it is you know um i think for safety reasons you would end up with a very tall bit of glass along here um you don't want water splashing over and you certainly don't want anyone climbing over or, or the alligators trying to climb over this way so um so I've, I've done that i do change this a bit i obviously it looks a bit silly having the glass going into the ground at the ends uh, so i do actually bring the concrete in uh, beyond the sides of the floor here so that it doesn't look like the glass is going into the hillside uh, but we'll see that in uh, in the next probably in the next edit possibly the one after um, so there we go so that's uh, that's the the main shape of the habitat is in place now and uh, and then it's all about the details and there's plenty of them to come so let's uh, let's load up the next save point right starting to take shape a bit more now so let me explain my thinking behind this seating area i wanted to continue the theme of this lovely sort of limestone um, staircase here so I, I decided to use these pieces now these obviously are the top pieces of um what are they limestone temple cornice yeah you know you, you put them on the tops of buildings usually but i thought they made quite nice wall pieces so i've used them around the edge here 
um, and then along the back I'll put some curbing down uh, or you know this is what I use for curbing it's actually just a, a breeze breeze block trim uh, and then I've made a, a, a flower bed so that will obviously make a nice edge filled with some some shrubbery and, and trees and, and whatever um, this does change over here I do get rid of this piece I, I couldn't quite fit this piece in properly here to make a nice edge so actually I, I do eventually get rid of this and this line of it along here and this just becomes one big flower bed with rocks at the end uh, so these are the tables that I was talking about these are the ones that are in the game for the restaurants uh, they're actually called restaurant table round and they're really good pieces it's a shame you can't change much about them um, actually you can recolor them so that's good so that's that you know that adds a bit of variety at least but then these these oh I found these these are fantastic look at these heaters and I've just sunken them in so that they look like they're fixed on the tables and I think that looks really really nice a um, bit dangerous I suppose because there's naked flames there and this would get pretty hot so people eating their dinner could easily touch that and burn themselves but do you know what I don't care it looks really good I'm very happy with that little creation there um, so that's our little seating area I didn't want to fill it up I wanted a nice area here for people to walk around and view the uh, the alligators but I'm very happy with how these tables look over here um, so the alligators themselves are obviously they're still in there and I've just put a little bit of framework around the glass so like I said I brought the concrete in here and here so that it's uh, a nice simple oblong piece of glass G giving it a little wooden frame uh, and a little bit of stonework along the floor here uh, and I have lowered it very slightly as well um, I, I just didn't think it looked quite right being exactly the same height as the concrete I don't know why I just wanted it to be just a little bit lower just thought it looked a bit a bit more of a separate piece then um, don't know why I just I just thought it looked better uh, so rock work I've just started a bit inside here obviously I needed a rock or something at the end of this area here uh, so I've continued it inside uh, and I do continue with the rocky mosses the, the rocky mosses hang on let me try that let me put my teeth in the mossy rocks is what I meant to say uh, so you get some more of them over this side and over the back here as well and uh, I've started uh, just manipulating the uh, concrete walls a bit so we have a nice big window here I thought this was a good spot for a window because you're going to capture the people coming in from uh, this ibex area up here coming down they'll be able to look straight in as they walk down towards it also obviously from over here eventually if people are coming a long way around uh, as they walk down here it's a nice view uh, and then because this is going to be a sleeping area at the end here uh, I thought it would make sense to have some windows uh, on the sides here to look in eventually when uh, when I built the uh, the bedroom area in here at the moment they're all just sitting around I think this look oh god he's terrifying isn't he I think he's gonna eat me <laughs> good old Tyson yeah he's just had his lunch so I don't think he's gonna eat me yet actually um, and around the outside I have just started off with a bit of rock work so very simple just a line of this aqua rock aqua, oh, I can never say it aqua faux rock is what I'm trying to say um, very simple edging just to cover up the edges of the pathway uh, and that continues all the way around here the pathway comes here for now um, I can't quite remember what I do with it I think eventually I do bring it all the way around and link it back up over here again I think I I think I actually bring it around so it it overlaps this um, this flower bed a little bit so it, it, it runs alongside it I think and then actually I think I extend the flower bed to fill in this corner here as well but we shall see that on uh, on one of the next save points um, right so there we go so that's coming along quite nicely I think you you get a good idea of what I'm trying to achieve and uh, yeah more detailing to come oh yes I also put a little zookeeper hut in over here um, I realized I hadn't really been putting enough of these in the zoo uh, and a lot of the keepers were having to queue to use them so uh, I, I've, I, I've, I've put one there and I and I've um, uh, I've already record. You know, I've already um, I've already built a couple more habitats in this already, and I've I've added in a couple more keeper huts with them as well. So there's plenty of keeper huts now. I've got all my keepers in. Like I said, I've, I've rescued them all from the front gate, and I've actually put a pathway in connecting. Uh, actually, over here somewhere, I think I put a pathway in. So my keepers are actually working much more efficiently now. But you'll you'll see that happen at some point in the next 
um, e- either later in this episode or in the next one or, or even the one after that I can't quite remember uh, but I've already built another two or three maybe even four habitats in this zoo um, I've got a bit carried away over the last few days just uh, building and building and building I've had all sorts of uh, cool ideas uh, anyway, let's uh, let's crack on, shall we? Sorry, I'm I'm jabbering away, and uh, you're probably just waiting to see the next save point. So let's load it up. Right, just a few uh, bits of detailing. Uh, so, like I said, I got rid of the, um, the sort of the, the limestone work from along here, and just just filled in this uh, this end with some rocks, uh, and made this into one solid flower bed. Um, so in the habitat, I have just done some detailing so nothing too complicated a few more rocks here and there a few along the back I had to be quite careful with this back piece originally I had more rocks along the back here um, but actually it made this too narrow unfortunately for the crocodiles to walk past um, so let me just show you their traversable area because it's it's really tricky with these things they see even there they can barely make it through here it's quite ridiculous I mean they can't walk that close to the concrete edge I mean it's just just daft <laughs> I just I don't know why it's programmed so badly I mean they've got the, all this space and they they just they can't walk on that bit of it I mean that, that is crazy I'm sorry I know it's a computer programming thing but look at the amount of space that they can't use around the edge of the habitat I'm sorry but that is ridiculous but there we go that's life you have to deal with these things so it means that you know they can't come over to this area at all um, yeah you're just wasting so much space it's terrible it's um, you know when you're trying to build a small compact habitat and uh, and they can't use the three feet at the side of it just because there's a concrete wall there um, but yeah so like I said it means that I had to get rid of a load of extra rock work that I had here just to allow them to actually be able to walk along this back area here but hey I'm not going to complain anymore it's just it's part of the game but it is a very annoying part of the game and I really don't see the need for it if I'm honest I mean look she's hang on you where what Oh, okay she's yeah see the, the the girls have a slightly less uh, bad area than than the males obviously the males are bigger um, if you look at him you see suddenly it, it changes quite a lot when you go from the male to the female but still I mean even the females can't walk that close to the edge it's, it's still stupid <laughs> there we go well, at least the females can come up into this little area I don't think he can no, see, he can't get up into here at all. I mean, this is just stupid, isn't it? I mean, look at that. There's so much space in here. In real life, a crocodile would love to come up in here and hide in the bushes. Um, but in the game, they can't. But there we go. Anyway, what have I been doing? Sorry, I'm jabbering again, aren't I? So, rock work and ferns. I love these tree ferns. They just look very crocodile-y to me. Very sort of ancient. I mean, crocodiles are sort of ancient animals, aren't they? Like little dinosaurs, really. Uh, and these ferns are. I mean, a fern this size... Uh, something like that would probably be about 50 years old so um, yeah they're quite suitable for uh, a crocodile habitat and obviously I've done my usual stuff on the ground here where I've put these lovely big squares of um, well I always forget what these are called the planted wooden panels um, down on the floor there to make it look nice and swampy a couple of nice big fallen logs one leaning up on here and one right flat along the bottom and some ferns some of the the usual ferns just sunk into the water these things are just great they look good up on the rocks but they also look good down underwater as well and uh, it just makes it look nice and swampy doesn't it and I've got a big um, um, a sort of a dead tree stump at the end here as well and um, yeah and then just continued it up here with the ferns uh, tree ferns and, and what are these ones I always forget what these ones are called uh, the bird nest ferns of course um, so yeah I didn't want to overdo the foliage in in the habitat because um, like I say that it, 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 even the foliage can affect their um, their traversable areas a bit uh, plus obviously you want to make sure that they can be seen so obviously if you're standing here looking in uh, you can see nicely so I didn't want to block the view in the water here you can get a really good view of them from here uh, and obviously the other areas you've got uh, are this one here so again I didn't want to put any big trees or rocks right in front of this window so you can see the uh, the alligators coming in and out of the water and we've got this end that I haven't done yet um, but, but uh, this is going to be their, their bedroom so I didn't want any foliage down there until I'd uh, I built their structure 
Uh, right, so there we go. That's uh, it's coming together, isn't it? A lot still to do. So let's uh, let's move on. Right, so their bed is in. Uh, let me explain my thinking here. Oh, look, he's just coming out. He's had his little afternoon snooze. Now Tyson is coming out to boss the territory. Go for a little swim. Nice. Right, so my thinking behind this, I wanted it to be to or, or to look like um, almost like a, a makeshift thing, you know. So I built a basic wooden structure down underneath here with these columns um just just beams of wood nice and simple and then what i wanted to make it look like on top was like they just laid down corrugated metal um, and the, the best way i found of doing that was with these pieces so it's just three sort of flat roof pieces put together and then i've just put put them on top of each other and i've you know i've arranged them a bit wonky so they don't look like they're all fixed down they're not symmetrical or whatever um, and I've even put a few of these smaller pieces on the side here and some spare beams to look like it's sort of, you know, still a building site almost, like it's still being constructed. Maybe they're going to add some more to it or or change pieces that are damaged or so. I, I don't know. It was, I, I, I like it. I think it, I think it works. I think it looks pretty decent. Um, even this, obviously you wouldn't really get this in a zoo, but I kind of, I, I just wanted to do something a little bit different basically. So I just thought, yeah, let's just put some spare beams and, and bits of metal down at the side here. And, um, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I, I think it looks pretty decent. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. I'm, yeah, I'm happy. Uh, I also put another window in just a small one here. Um, I so cause you've got this one here for really watching them coming in and out of the water you can't really see the bed from here and these ones at the back here you can you can obviously you can see them when they're in the back of the bed but i also just wanted extra window at the front here uh to, ooh, it's going a bit funky isn't it uh to see them if they're up the front and then you've got the the same on the other side here as well so lots of areas to view them from if they're um they're having a snooze in here and there's still a bit more detailing that I do in here. I put put some lights on these three panels here. Um, uh, but yeah, that, that's all. That's all for this update. So what's left to do? Obviously, you've got this flower bed with the pathway around it. You have the flower bed on this side. You've got the detailing of the rocks around here. So I, I, I need some greenery around there. And do, 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 what else was there that's still left to do? Um, I think some um, some information boards, and I think I do something. I can't actually remember what. I'm sure I do something on this end wall here. Um, we'll have to wait and see for the next cut to see exactly what that is. I, I, I'm sure I remember putting something on here. Um, so that'll be a nice surprise for both of us when uh, when you see it in a minute. Um, but yeah, there we go. So that's our that's our bed. That's our, our little crocodile bedroom area. So yeah, uh, so alligator, not crocodile, alligator. And uh, yeah, I think it's okay. Let me know what you think. So let's uh, let's move on. Let's load up our last save point, and we will see our finished habitat. And here we are. Lots of detailing done. So let's start off over in our seating area here. Uh, I decided to go for the really uh, jungly look on this flower bed. I didn't want lots of colour. I didn't want lots of just all the same shrubs that I've done in the other sort of nearby enclosures. I wanted it to look really nice and jungly and continue the theme from the uh, inside the habitat here. So lots of tree ferns and lots of this the, the, the ground ferns and the bracken down here. Like I said, I, I extended the flower bed out here and the pathway hugs the flower bed all the way over until it joins the gravel path over here. So yeah, so I, I really like this little flower bed. It's very simple, but it's uh, it's exactly what I needed. Um, and you know, if you're down here, I think you'd you'd feel quite nice and sort of sunk down in the ground, quite cosy. You know, you've got your alligators swimming over here, and you're sitting down here with your your heater in the middle of the table, and up above you, you've got all these lovely big ferns kind of hanging over your head. Um, so yeah, very pleased with how that turned out actually. Uh, and then the same in this flower bed on the side here as well. Again, just. A uh, few few tree ferns and some some bracken down the bottom. Information board there as well for anyone approaching from uh, this side over here. 
a uh, little bits of detailing down here I've just put a little drain in of course somewhere like this is going to get filled with water isn't it um, so I, I felt like I wanted to put a drain in here and one of these little fire hydrants as well just so that they can hose down any mess off of the uh, off of the ground here uh, let's move around this way so along the edge here where I put the stones down I've just dotted some ferns just simple stuff oh my word are those two floating no they're not floating they've got long stems okay that's good I thought they were floating for a second there um, so yeah nothing tricky nothing complicated or clever just some basic ferns oh and look at that I did do something on the end here you got a nice little information board and look at that cartoon alligator car terrifying eh um, and then just a few of these little sort of leafy signs around as well I just I just wanted to do something a bit different on the end there just to add a little bit of uh, color and decoration um, let's move on we've got more ferns around the side we have uh, another information board here for anyone who's coming down this ramp here they can see through the window and they can uh, have a read up about the animals there uh, I haven't decorated this keeper hut because that will get decorated depending on what I build in this area here. Uh, and then, as you saw, the pathway now links all the way around here. Okay, so inside the habitat, not too much new stuff in here, but I have put the uh, enrichment items in. So they've got a, a frozen block of food here. They've got a pumpkin back here. Uh, a rubber duck, obviously, in the pond because everyone likes to play with a rubber duck. They have a football, they have one of these lovely meat, um, sort of, I don't know, what is this classed as? A restraint feeder, there we go. Uh, they've also got a rubbing pad here. I purposely aimed the rubbing pad so that it can be viewed from the two windows there and there. Uh, and they've also got one of these little uh, blood scent markers down here as well. And under here they have got three lights, uh, which I've, I've, I've made them orange to suggest that they are heat lamps obviously in the game they're not but it makes them look like they are um, and I've also made them so they are permanently on even during the day just so it looks like they are actually providing the alligators with a bit of heat uh, oh look he's having his dinner actually she's having a dinner look at that that's a great animation who is this oh it is Tyson it is our our big chap look at him go nom 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 He's done well there. Oh look, the meat's moving on its own now. That's it's possessed meat. <laughs> it's still alive. <laughs> Brilliant. So yeah, there we go. That is our American alligator enclosure. I'm pretty happy with how this one's turned out actually. Um, I always struggle a bit with these sort of water viewing areas that you sink down. I'm, I've never quite mastered the art of getting the. Um, the barriers sunken into the ground properly so this one actually turned out pretty good and I'm, I'm very happy with this whole area here the seating area I love how I've um, got these heaters on the tables I like that I use these pieces as the wall surround even though that's obviously not what they're intended for but I think they work pretty nicely um, and the flower bed with the raised pathway here all looks pretty nice as well and obviously it's all sort of set off with these lovely big fake stairs as well so yeah I'm, I'm very happy with how that all turned out the habitat itself um, pretty standard stuff you know nothing particularly new and exciting I guess for me the bed was the main new thing that I hadn't tried doing before this sort of uh, makeshift look and um, I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out especially with these spare parts lying around a uh, little bit daft and unrealistic I suppose but you know what that's that's the joy of this game you don't have to be realistic all the time do you, you can just have a bit of fun sometimes um, and yeah and uh, yeah on the whole I am pretty happy with that as a habitat it's, it's a good size the animals are happy I think it blends in nicely with the rest of the zoo so yeah on the whole pretty pleased and look at that zoo I mean it's coming together really well this is probably the biggest zoo I've done now I think my lunar zoo may be about the same in fact lunar zoo is probably bigger uh, but it's got bigger habitats in and obviously the point of this zoo is all the habitats are staying relatively small um, that's you know that's kind of as big as they get this sort of size they're, they're all fairly similar sizes really 
and uh, that's the that's the idea with this i'm not having all the big animals i'm not going to have elephants or bison or anything in this zoo um well probably not you never know i might uh, i might manage to fit some of them in somewhere but uh, they're, they're going to be in small enclosures if they do come along but there we go there's there's our american alligators uh, let me know what you think down in the comments uh, if you've enjoyed the video please do hit the like button because that really helps me get the video out to more people and we can try and build up our little planet zoo community a little bit more and uh, yeah if you if you've got anything to say please do leave a comment but I hope you have had fun and uh, please do keep coming back because I've got plenty more episodes on the way like I said I've already already built at least two i think three more habitats in the zoo um i'm trying to think what the next one is and i'll be honest i can't remember um i think it's over here yeah let's go with that i think it's in this gap here and i'm gonna i'm gonna give you a spoiler it's penguins oh yes it's penguins we already have a penguin habitat in this uh, in this zoo one of our original ones over here we have uh, I think these are the African penguins are they not king penguins no so these are the king penguins so I have done a new penguin habitat for the African penguins in this gap here and it's a pretty epic habitat I'll be honest it was uh, it was tricky and it took me a couple of tries to get it all correct um, but it's turned out pretty good so there we go there's our spoiler for the next episode uh, I'm pretty sure that's the next one anyway. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, if it's not, I apologise and I've given you a spoiler for the next but one episode. Anyway, there we go. So there is our alligator habitat. So, thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you've had fun. And hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Until then, take care. Bye for now.